Let's talk about egoism, ethical egoism. Yes, that's a topic of discussion, ethical egoism. Okay, my approach is going to be slightly different than other professionals, okay, in the field of philosophy. Typically, the presentation on ethical egoism is presented as something to knock down. Here's egoism, boom. Because in many people's eyes, the idea of ethical egoism is meaning ethical selfishness. Here's the problem. Selfishness is already considered to be unethical. So if you take an unethical act, there's no way you can generate an ethical theory from it because the foundation is lack of ethics. Or at least it's a wrong to other people. And ethics is about avoiding wrongs to other people. So selfishness cannot be the foundation. Ethical egoism is not ethical selfishness because the word egoism does not mean selfishness. If you want to say ethical egotism, that's a contradiction. Egotism means selfishness. Consequently, there is a vocabulary problem in this business, okay? Because egoism is just being self-centered or studying that the way people like to be self-centered. And ego just means I, okay? So, I want to defend this theory. This is Alan McPhee's version of egoism. I want to defend this because I think it's a positive theory that actually works if you understand the right way. <clears throat> Why would I defend this controversial theory in the first place, you wonder? America! Hmm? America, that's why. Hmm? Corporate America, capitalism, to be more precise, okay? These businesses, these corporations have an ethical system and it is ethical egoism. They're in business to present a service or product to the community. In exchange, they get some remuneration, money. Hmm? It's not for free. Yes, they're looking for their own self-interest, but they're providing you with a good service. A nice car, nice home, nice clothes. In return, they're looking to make a profit. They want to get enough money to pay for their operating costs and get a little more. That's called the profit side. If they break even, they did not make a profit, and they will not continue their service. So they are looking for their own self-interest, but they're doing it by providing you a service. Corporate America, capitalism, the, found, the fundamental ethics of capitalism is ethical egoism. All right, that's where business is doing it. All I'm saying now, why can't we do the same thing in morality? I mean, the individual who is not the corporate executive. Hmm? That's all it is. We already know, we already see, we can see how well it works in corporate American capitalism. We see capitalism dominates the planet now, all right? Now, we also see the meaning of the downside of capitalism. Hmm? The same thing that can go in capitalism wrong in capitalism can go also in the individual state as well. When a corporation get very, very greedy and, and they start abusing uh, their employees and uh, start changing the customers. All that stuff that can go wrong in corporate America can go in the individual application of ethical egoism. Let's embrace that as true. Okay? Doesn't make the theory fall. Calvin still works. Right? So let's look at the theory and then and the way I want to defend it. All right? Um, and it's because it's part of America, that's why I want to defend it. It's part of the world now, okay? So let's look at it. My three-step argument, right? The first one, humans are essentially self-aware. I want to defend capitalism by recognizing that I am a conscious being. And just because I am conscious and I'm aware of myself, and I'm aware of myself in action, doesn't mean I'm, uh, I'm being selfish, I'm evil, I'm bad or anyway. I'm aware of myself. And while in action, sometimes I can take advantage of people, and sometimes I can observe people taking advantage of me and say nothing, okay? Being constantly aware of yourself, this should not make you a bad person. Most people who argue against it or egoism, they go right there. If you're aware of yourself that something is wrong, you cut yourself. Oh, oh, it's bleeding. Let me clean the wound. Let me patch it up. Oh, you're being selfish. That's irrational, my friend to penalize me for being a conscious being, taking care of myself. That's just so irrational. That's wrong. So, step number one, principle or premise number one, we are being, 
we're essentially self-aware, we're a conscious being, and that is nothing, that's not good or bad. Um, principle number two, if I want to generate general theory of morality, I want to begin with common sense, say to me, all right? I pretend I don't know what the word means, and I listen to what people are saying. And what people tell me is that being moral in the world benefits people. People like other people being ethical and moral because it's beneficial to them, their friends, their family. Because when you're doing the right thing, you either are neutral, your acts are neutral to them, or it is positive for them, okay? So that idea of ethics benefiting people is a big, big aspect of ethics. Let's assume that, let's say that to be true. It is true, okay? Well, one approach to ethical ego is to say this. If morality is beneficial to people, okay, shouldn't it also be beneficial to me? So as an ethical ego, as I can say, I'll, be, I'll engage in those acts if it's beneficial to me, all right? Because if ethics is beneficial to people, shouldn't it be beneficial to everyone involved, including the moral agent? The answer has to be yes. If it is not, you will not have morality anywhere. So in every other theory of morality, the agent must be getting some kind of benefit, even if he or she is not focusing on that. That's guaranteed. This is an analysis. It's inescapable truth. So, premise number two. <laughs> It's inescapable, right? So purpose number two then say, you can act in such a way as to uh, look for the benefit for yourself while trying to benefit other people now, okay? You're not just like doing it in isolation for yourself alone. <clears throat> now I would like to jump. Those two to me is the, is the two principle. With that, I like to present my moral principle. That's all I need. Prin P1, Humans are essentially self-aware. I'm a conscious being. That's not good or bad. It's just what, how I am. Principle number two, um, morality benefits people. That's I get from society. It's a beneficial to people. Therefore, it should benefit a moral agent. Okay. From that, I can derive a moral principle. This is Alan's version, but let's see what it says. Okay, the moral principle would be this. And that, in my version as an egoism, and that, which may be regarded as morally right if it promotes an agent's genuine self-interest. I'm about to act as an ethical egoist, and I'm going to treat that act as right if it promotes my genuine self-interest. First of all, the word promote means it's not one for one. I just believe something good for me, so therefore I'm going to do it. I'm going to do that. Okay? Um, let's say something positive. Um, Friendship. How about stealing a bike? No, no stealing. No stealing. No stealing today. We're going to be good. How about respect someone's property? All right? My friend Tim has left his bike in a place where uh, somebody could steal it. I come upon it, okay? He's my friend, okay? So I believe it's in my genuine self friendship, my genuine self interest to maintain that friendship over time, right? So I engage in activity that promote that friendship. In this case, I will take the bike and bring it to his place or inform that the bike is outside and so be there. Um, I support him um, when he's in need, when he needs somebody to listen to him. I'm there for him. So I engage in activity that support him. The word promotes not tit for tat or the us doesn't work. It's an inductive argument, okay? Because you're looking at experiences. This theory is a consequential theory, all right? Um... Can't guarantee the future. Maybe Tim is the one who's going to be a bad friend. The second thing is, um, an act is more right if it promotes a genuine, genuine self-interest. Genuine self-interest. What does that mean? Genuine. First of all, it, does, it means long-term interest. Not in the immediate scenario. The long-term interest. Okay? Like I come across Tim's bike. You know what I mean? I can steal his bike. He wouldn't even know I took it. All right? But is it, my, is it from my genuine self-interest? Well, there's a lot of people in prison. A lot of friends have been broken up because people stole from other people. Okay? And they thought they wouldn't get away with it. You're not promoting the friendship if you're stealing from your friend. Whether you get caught or not is irrelevant. The logic says you're not promoting it. Okay? And if you look at that right, 
all the common sense moral, moral values that we support is supported by this. Cheating your friends, lying to them or about them, and any, any behavior that ruin a relation that you have or could ruin a relationship is not promoting that relation. So this little claim here defends all ordinary situations, no basic moral values, right? Genuine also means what's really in your gen beyond this long term, but metaphysically. We have to go to the metaphysical level as well. Um, that is, the theory is going to be limited by your understanding of reality. I may really think Sam is a good friend and I'm going to do what I can to maintain that friendship. But metaphysically, he's a bad person. He's a con artist. I may not know that. Okay? So there is a limitation of principle I'm presenting because we may not know what's not the metaphysical um, best self-interest. But so we act that way. And it may be a shortcoming of the theory, but I think you are at least in your consciousness, you're doing the best thing that's available. And that's what you want to preserve, your moral consciousness, your moral aptitude, attitude or aptitude. Okay? You will still be an ethical person. You'll be acting ethically. That's the most you can have. And as you understand that the reality and the metaphysics behind the situation grows, so will your, your decision mod be modified. Okay? That may be seen as a limit, but I accept it as a, as a practical limit because this is an inductive argument. It's a consequential theory. It's based on experience. And since you can't see what's going to happen in the future directly, with good predictions, you have to accept it's a possibility. We might argue against me that this gives you moral beliefs about the world. Well, it's a good belief. You act this way, and it gives you a good way to live your life. All right? <clears throat> the last thing I want to mention here on this principle is the idea of self-interest. When we say self-interest, it's what you think is good for you. Hmm? It's what you think is good for you. It's like going back to the word of genuineness metaphysics. It's, a, it's an idea of your head. Okay, it's a mind, it's an ego idea, okay? It's what I think is good for me. So it is ego-driven, self-interest. I think it's good for me to have that friendship, I maintain it. I think it's good for me to work in that corporation, so I do all acts that promote my continuity in that corporation, that promotes my getting promoted in that corporation, okay? I do not engage in embezzlement, um, coming to work delayed all the time, uh, stealing property from the company because I want to engage those acts that promote my interest. In this case, my continuity in that company. Okay? This is the general principle that I put forth for ethical egoism. <clears throat> um, an ethical egoist, you know, I can say does not really indulge, indulge in selfishness because it's not in his or her genuine self-interest. However, they're also not altruists. They may act altruistic, but they're not altruists as in terms of character because they go against what they are, okay? You're an ethical egoist. You're going to form the character trait of being an egoist, okay? So eventually, that's who you're going to be. You're going to be an egoist. You can act altruistic. An ethical egoist is not going to be selfless. That would be like self-destruction, okay? No. That's not possible for an ethical egoist to do, go that far. But in particular situations, no. Only time an ethical ego will sacrifice him or herself is because that sacrifice leads to their greater interests. Like a soldier is a great ethical ego person. They sacrifice their life for the greater, the greater good of their society. Okay? So it is not like an ethical egoist cannot sacrifice his or her life if the interest is above them. Like if I'm, I'm supporting my society, my country, okay? then it's above me, then I can sacrifice my life in that interest, okay? So if you formulate it right, you can have great sacrifice and ethical ego as well, right? Um, ethical egoism, the biggest challenge to this theory is selfishness. Since you put yourself first and the others second, you have to have a strong, I shouldn't say strong character. You have to have a strong character. You have to develop it over time. Ethical egoism can uh, lead to selfishness, but it also can lead to something else. If you're already a selfish person, you have that character trait of being selfish, one way to move from selfishness is to become an ethical egoist. 
gradually, when you put yourself first, rather than penalize yourself, ask yourself if you're taking advantage of people. Do it again, 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 and eventually you end up as an ethical egoist. You will not be taking, you still put yourself first the way you want, but now you're not taking advantage of, of, of people. And if you're being an ethical egoist, one of the weaknesses is that you might backslide into selfishness, okay? That is a, that is a, a weakness of the theory. I cannot make that one go away. You're not going to be caught in selflessness, but you may be caught in uh, being selfish. So if you're going to apply this theory practically, one has to look for these, uh, uh, these elements. You might end up being selfish. Um, overall, this theory works. You know? It's a, it's a, it's a theory that works. It's very practical. I wouldn't say, in terms of the way we were, the word knowledge, inductive knowledge, scientific knowledge, it's as good as any scientific theory. If I'm going to live in the world and I'm aware of myself and I understand that being moral is, is a, catches the quality of the act towards other people, okay? That if I act such that I don't hurt people unnecessarily, okay? And uh, these kind of things are going to benefit me socially in the long run. I, that is a motive for me to be ethical. And does it really work? It does work. All basic moral principles like common sense hold to be true would work. When you get in a complex situation like um, capital punishment, stem cell research, and things like that, you have to go deeper and see what's your individual involvement in it. Okay? Um... I defend this theory before, like I mentioned, because um, the psychology of many people in America is that we are egoists because we're influenced by the business model, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. An egoist is someone who's highly motivated for success, and they're not going to uh, accept any excuse from themselves, okay? They're going to look at every hurdle or any obstacle as a hurdle they have to get over until they're successful. We promote egoism. We promote the highly motivated personality in America. Never mind your background, your family background, never mind your race, never mind your sex, your gender orientation. If you want something, you apply yourself, you can acquire it. This is the land where things happen that happen because of your individual effort. This is the promotion of egoism. When we're promoting egoism, we're not saying be selfish. We're not saying forget the other people around you, okay? Bring them along. And that is the upward-moving egoist, someone who brings other people along. And for that reason, I really see the need to defend the positive version of ethical egoism because it is a positive aspect of who we are today.